Hey everyone, this is Ethan. Wanted to quick chat about denial of service attacks and it's uh, an unfortunate consequence of uh, doing web scraping and not understanding uh, the tolerance of certain web servers. Um, you know, if you have any experience doing web scraping, you've probably, uh, you know, accidentally um, gotten a 501, um, some server error, uh, if you've hit the website too hard, um, or, you know, if you're communicating with an API, uh, usually they'll indicate what, what the, how many times you can hit them every, you know, second or minute or whatever it might be. And then, you know, alternatively, there are some APIs that will just slow you down to the fact, to, to uh, the point where you cannot make any more requests. So a lot of different ways of handling uh, rate limiting uh, with an API or a website. Um, in the work that I do, I spend a lot of time, you know, web scraping and communicating with APIs and I started getting uh, really into the async IO library. And today I would like to talk to you how to do rate limiting uh, with async IO. So when I initially found the async IO uh, library, I wanted to see what, uh, how I can make HTTP requests. Uh, you try to use the request library, uh, but that doesn't work because it is uh, requests are, uh, they block. Uh, they're blocking, uh, whereas the AI HTTP is a non-blocking uh, library that can communicate with the async IO um, library. Um, and so there are, um, when I was going through and I was trying to figure out, you know, how to make all these requests, I was like, you know, I can make a thousand requests within the span of a, a second, um, but that can create a DDoS attack. And so how do you perform rate limiting um, using the AIO, HTTP, and async IO libraries? And I read a lot of blog posts, um, and I didn't really find a really good answer until uh, someone mentioned semaphores. So what semaphores are, they're a way of managing the, uh, the queue um, for the async IO library. And what I'm going to talk about today is how to maintain state and uh, do and implement semaphores. And so what we have here is, there's two main parts. There's the fetch uh, class, and that is intended to maintain state and make requests. And then we have the main function, which takes a set of URLs, uh, the rate, so you know how fast should it be going, and what is the limit uh, for each of those requests. And so before diving deep into this, I just wanna show you an example of it. Uh, you can see I ran it here uh, before. And the rate limit is set to two. And so two uh, requests every two seconds. You can see it's running. And um, from a lot of the blog posts I saw before, um, I didn't, it seemed like there was a lot of code that was required to do rate limiting. And semaphores just make it super, super, super easy uh, with one line of code. And you can see here, uh, we have the timestamp right here. And you can see requests are happening uh, two at a time every two seconds. And Let's uh, let's dive into this a little bit further. Okay, let's look at the um, the fetch class. You'll notice that I have the uh, adder library here. This is just for uh, removing a lot of boilerplate uh, code for validating uh, um, inputs to the fetch class. And what this does it has a limit, which is um, a semaphore, and then it has the rate. Um, the default is five, and it needs to be an integer. So what happens here is it takes the um, the limit right here. Actually, let me get rid of this. It's not required. Um, it takes the limit and it says, you know, the semaphore says like, oh, you know, every two seconds you can, um, or every, two requests uh, you can make um, at any given time. And so um, it takes uh, those two requests. It uses the async or the AIO HTTP library and it makes those requests and it sleeps, right? And so this is the rate, so this is every two seconds. And uh, all we're doing here is just, uh, you know, getting the session, uh, making the requests, uh, using the get method, and, and, you know, certainly you can modify this if you have custom requests uh, or authentication. And then it's simply just, uh, you have to put this await uh, keyword in front of uh, asynchronous uh, functions, and it just gets the JSON, uh, gets a status, and I just make a log here of, uh, you know, saying that we made the request and the status, and I have the, um, the timestamp associated with the log right here. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, all we need to do then is to 
set the semaphore. So this is uh, set to two in this example. Um, we instantiate the class of fetch. We uh, have a list of our URLs, which are right here. And uh, we loop through those URLs and um, add all of the uh, the methods to this um, empty list. And then we put the empty list into an async IO function. Again, um, we need to use a wait, and then we can get the results. Um, we're not returning anything from this function, so the results will all be none. So that is how to implement a semaphore um, using the async IO library and AIO HTTP um, library. And uh, I'm using PyTest to run this. You can see here uh, the inputs are, you know, I have a URL limit and I just generate a bunch of URLs. I can show you what that looks like. So <laughs> did a system deficit, it didn't like that very much. Uh, you can see all the URLs that it's generating. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. We just have the rate and the limit. We put that into our main function. The main function uh, implements all of the uh, fetch requests and, and make requests uh, using the URLs. Pretty straightforward. Um, so hopefully that helps you uh, if you're making API requests using the AIO HTTP library and async IO. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns. All right, thank you.